<sighs> Why, hello there. Brent here to bring your own tools on today's episode. If you want to see how we built this amazing chicken coop from scratch, keep on watching. But it started. <laughs> For this project, it all started with a trip to the lumberyard, and we picked up these 4x4 posts that are pressure treated that are going to make up the base for our chicken coop. The majority of the material that we're going to be using on this project is not going to be pressure treated. It's just going to be your standard Douglas fir, but because the base is going to have ground contact, I wanted to make sure that those posts were pressure treated. For the base of our structure, we have four legs as well as four sides, and we have to put these together, but the most important part about this is to make sure that everything's square, because if it's not square now, then your structure is never going to be square. In order to check for square, I'm using a speed square. You can also use a contractor square, but this really helps to determine and make sure that the angle that I place these 2x4s and the 4x4 posts together are actually at a right angle. I do suggest pre-drilling your holes and using some exterior screws for this application, as well as some clamps to hold everything in place before you fasten. This just makes life a lot easier in the long run, and after I have all four sides fastened together, I do insert a center support beam just to stiffen up the entire structure. In order to guarantee that we did make a structure that was square, I do double check the cross dimensional measurement. And if these two measurements are exactly the same, then our structure is perfectly square. Before we move any further, I did want to note that I am making drawings for the structure. The plywood here that I'm cutting for the base is 48 inches by 39 inches, and that is going to be what the drawings are going to be made at. However, if you want to see different size drawings for a chicken coop that you want to build, let me know in the comment section because if there are numerous people that want the same size, I will for sure make multiple sizes of this chicken coop. For all the sheathing purposes needed for this project, we will be using half inch plywood, and I secured this piece of paneling to our base structure. Once fully secured, it's time to start our layout process for our walls. This is a small structure, so the layout process is actually quite easy, but just keep in mind that your studs should be no more than 16 inches on center. Now this is going to be a lean-to style chicken coop, just like my shed project, which basically means that one side of the chicken coop is going to be taller than the other. The first side, which is also the shorter side, is going to be made up at four and a half feet tall, and the second taller side is going to be at five feet tall. I did want to beef up the opening of our structure, which is why I'm using a 4x4 post at that location, but I also have to accommodate for the header, which is why I'm cutting it short. In order to build a properly secured wall, I did cut a base plate as well as a top cap at 48 inches and secured them with my framing nailer. These nails are 3 inches long and can go sideways when they actually hit, so make sure you have proper hand position and you're not nailing your hand by accident. I'm noting this specifically because I did realize watching this video that I had my hand precariously close to the nailer and if one of those nails jetted out at the wrong direction, I could have easily went through my finger. I tipped the first wall up, positioned it appropriately on the side of our base, and then secured it to the base with 3 inch long screws. I then cut my lumber at the appropriate size for the second taller wall, which is 6 inches taller than the first side. Just remember that the 4x4 post that we have at the doorway does have to be the same height as the smaller side because it still needs to be aligned with our header. Once I have this second wall secured to our base, I then proceed to installing our header that connects both walls together. This is a very important measurement and step because we want to make sure that this is perfectly square as well because we will have a door opening at this location and if it's not square, it's going to make it a lot harder to install a door. In order to secure the header to our framework, I did have to use 6 inch long screws which made it really easy to secure but make sure you have those on hand. If you don't have those on hand, you could use a pocket hole jig by Craig. This thing makes it extremely easy to drill pocket holes for your fasteners. And once the holes are taken care of, position the board appropriately and fasten away. After I have both side top caps fully aligned and fastened, I can move on to my final wall. This wall is the same height as my shorter wall, which just makes life a little bit easier, especially when it comes time to installing our roof rafters. 
you do want to have some type of a daylight in this space, which is why I'm also framing out a window on two sides of our chicken coop. I cut up a few more 2x4s at 45 inches. Now I cut them at 45 inches because I'm going to be applying a second 2x4 on both sides. And since each 2x4 is 1.5 inches thick, we have a perfect 48 inch long span. In order to properly secure all of our roof rafters onto our walls, I'm using hurricane ties and galvanized nails with a trusty palm nailer. Now the palm nailer does come in quite handy, especially in these small tight knit areas. With roof rafters, you can space them out at larger distances like 24 inches, but because this is such a nice little chicken coop, we space them out at 16 inches on center. We have all of our framing taken care of at this point, which is why I'm moving on to our sheathing. In order to reduce plywood waste as well as making less cuts for myself, I did make this shed 48 inches exactly, which is why I only needed to make one cut for this entire panel, as well as one cut for the secondary side. But of course we had to make a couple cuts on the back side because this side is of course angled at the very top. And this is also why I have our roof rafters aligned with the framework because we can sheathe all the way up to the very top and make a nice cohesive transition. As I make my way to the front side, I don't use a whole piece because I wanna actually use up some of my wasted pieces. And in order to make a perfect flush opening, I highly suggest using a router with a flush trim bit and using that as a guide. The small bearing at the end of your router is actually going up against the framework of the structure and then easily cutting your plywood at the exact location needed. I finished off the remaining sheathing and once that was taken care of, we can move on to our roof. I want the roof line to extend past the front and back slightly, and therefore I secure another 2x4 on both sides of our roof, and that way I'm able to install roof sheathing and 2x4s on both ends. In order to cut perfect openings for our windows, I pre-drill one hole and then go back and use my router with that flush trim bit and cut out a perfect hole that's flush with our framing. In order to provide a nice clean and cohesive look for our windows, I did want to do some framing, which is why I grabbed a couple scrap pieces of 2x4, ran them through the table saw to have a nice one inch thick piece, and then used that as the framework for our window. I place a bead of construction adhesive around the perimeter and then install our 2x4 trim. Yep, 2x4 trim. This will come in extremely handy once it comes time to actually putting in a window, which we are doing or at least we're installing a glass panel, which we can pick up at Home Depot. Once everything is fitted in nicely, I then take my finish nailer and nail the perimeter of our trim in order for it to secure properly while the adhesive dries. In order to reduce our material list, as well as being mindful of using our scrap wood, I take my table saw and run our scrap pieces of plywood through it at one inch thick. This produces perfect trim pieces that we can use around the window, as well as around the shed later on in the video. I do want a nice mitered corner look around the windows, which is why I'm cutting each end at a 45 degree angle and then nailing them in place around the perimeter of our 2x4 window trim. I do suggest grabbing a level just to guarantee that we have proper levelness as well as making sure that each side is aligned properly with each other. For this to be a proper check coop, we have to have nesting boxes. And for those, the first thing we have to do is make sure we have holes that are appropriate for our hens. I create a makeshift jig, which is literally just a screw attached to a piece of scrap, and I attach my router to the board itself. All I'm using is a straight router bit, which means that I can plunge into the plywood easily. And once I have my hole centered and pre-drilled, I then insert my screw into the plywood, which acts as a pivot point around the entire circle. This really does provide a quick and perfect way to create a circle out of almost mere anything. And if you want the hole smaller or larger than this, all you have to do is adjust the distance between the router bit and the screw. I fabricate a quick rectangle out of some 2x4s, which will be the landing pad for our nesting boxes. Once I have it centered underneath our three holes, I can then fasten it to the structure and have a very stable base for our hens to lay their eggs. Of course, we add some plywood to the base of our frame, and now it's time to make this nesting box more of a box. 
In order to do so, I'm still taking my scrap plywood and running that through the table saw, then making sure we have the appropriate angle. So we also have an angled roof line, which makes it a lot easier for water runoff. As for dimensions, each side is 15 inches deep and the short side is 13 inches and the tall side is 16 inches. Just keep that in mind. I tack each panel down with some finishing nails and then secure it finally with a few exterior screws. Once I have the final side in place, I can then move on to some trim work. Now the trim again is just gonna be strips of the plywood that I already ripped. This is nice for a number of different reasons. Number one being, of course, we're using the excess strip that's not gonna be costing us anything extra. And two, it's actually also providing a very nice stylish look to finish off the sides of our shed. And on the corners, I do apply a bit of construction adhesive first and then nail each piece of finished trim. This adds a lot more durability and strength, especially long-term in these specific areas. I run each piece all the way up to our roof line and all the way down to the very bottom of our sheathing. As I make my way around the coop, I do place trim in areas where there are stud locations because those are covering up most of the screw heads. Very dual function and provides a nice aesthetic. This trim is also very vital when beefing up our nesting boxes because once we actually have this plywood nailed in place, I do take a bead of construction adhesive on both sides, then nail those pieces in place, which gives us really nice heavy duty corners, as well as gives us a nice proper way to finish off both sides of the back side nesting corners. Once I have everything beefed up appropriately, I then make up a nice lid for our nesting boxes and move on to some dividers. Now the dividers are just pieces of two x four and some plywood because we do wanna make sure that each hen has a bit of privacy when laying their eggs. Now that we have our nesting boxes taken care of, we can move on to finishing up our trim. And the only thing that's different with this trim is that I did place a 45 degree angle at the very bottom to make sure that it doesn't get in the way of the lid when we do open the lid for our nesting boxes. We can now move on to our doorway. And our doorway is also gonna be utilizing our Craig pocket hole jig to make sure we have a perfect and easy way to frame up a nice cohesive square door. Once we have our doorway square and frame, I then install some plywood sheathing right on top of it. And by utilizing some shims, I'm able to position the door exactly where I want it located and then start installing our trim around the door. This is a very nice and easy way to make sure we have spacing on all sides of the door, but also make sure that we have the ability to adjust the door slightly if the trim needs it. In order to finish off the trim nicely on the door as well, I do place a secondary level of trim around the perimeter of the door, which you can match up perfectly and adjust spacing as needed. I picked up some larger exterior hinges and to make sure that the hinge is actually laying flush against the door, I did have to cut a small back piece of plywood to make sure that that hinge laid flush against the door. The last bit of trim needed on this project is just a layer of trim down the center of the door as well as on the top and bottom of it, just to make sure we have a cohesive look for this entire coop. Now that our framework is taken care of for our chicken coop, we can now work on our chicken run. Now this is gonna be a fenced off area right behind the large chicken coop that we just built. That way our chickens are free to roam as well as pick up the grass and be safe while doing it. This section is gonna be eight feet long, have the same angled roof line. However, it's gonna be slightly shorter than our chicken coop. This entire system is assembled and fastened together using that Craig pocket hole jig and exterior screws and I am placing a pressure treated 4x4 post right where the door is gonna be because I wanna make sure we have plenty of structural support going in and out of that door. But now that we have our chicken wall panels taken care of, we can proceed to moving all of this material to the job site. Now this thing is a lot heavier than expected, and luckily for me, I was able to pick up this hydraulic trailer, which was extremely easy to load up by myself, as long as I had some assistance with Kona overseeing the entire process. 
Then when I got it to the job site, I was easily able to lower it and push it into position. Just keep in mind that you might not be working on a completely flat surface, so I made up a few makeshift shims, which straightened everything out extremely quickly. Now, once I have the actual unit in place, I then can install and fasten our run to the chicken coop. The only thing I needed to attach these two systems together was to take a couple galvanized brackets and secure them at the top and bottom of our chicken coop. You do want to double check for levelness because we are working on a surface that's not perfectly flat, but once we have that taken care of, we can make sure we have a proper header for our doorway entry. I use a couple more of those six inch long screws that are specifically designed for pressure treated, and I do want to also brace the bottom of this as well. Of course, I ran out of longer bolts at this point, which is why I did do a pocket hole jig with exterior fasteners, but as we've seen before, that's extremely strong and durable. All the walls for our chicken run are accounted for, and therefore we can move on to our roof rafters. This is the same exact type of installation that I did previously on our chicken coop, but a longer span, of course. With our framing and roof line accounted for, I can move on to securing our door to our chicken run. Now this door again is going to be the same exact style as our chicken coop, however this one does not get any plywood on it because we want this to be an open air system with chicken wire being attached to each section eventually. A large sizable piece of plywood does add quite a bit of stability and strength, and I know plenty of people don't add plywood to the run, however it does add quite a bit of rigidity. And of course the final step to this project before we start painting is to make sure we have an opening for our chickens. I picked up this motorized chicken door on Amazon and this is actually from Chicken Run. It has amazing reviews and it actually can be set at specific times whether you want the door open or closed so you don't even have to go out there to open and close it yourself. That way you know for certain the chickens are going to be safe and sound whether you remember to close the door or not. There are a lot of unique angles and crevices on this project, and the best way to go about painting all this, or in this case staining, is with a sprayer. For this project, we are using the Wagner Control QX5 sprayer. Now this sprayer specifically is designed for stains, which is why we're using it. It's a perfect way to apply this stain very quickly and easily with a nice cohesive pass. So let's fill it up and get to spraying. There are numerous reasons why I'm going with a stain over a paint, but the most important one was the fact that I did want something durable, but I also wanted to make sure that I was using something that was not going to peel over time. And stains generally are much less likely to peel than a paint would. The stain that I'm using is a solid opaque finish, and it was extremely thick, which is why I did have to thin it out a bit before I used this sprayer, but as you can see, it made quick work of trying to get into the, all those tight-knit crevices, which is why this sprayer was so handy and the reason why Wagner is the sponsor of this week's video. This sprayer really did make life a lot easier when it came to applying into all these really unique tight-knit crevices, and with the fact that this QX5 sprayer has so many different settings, whether it's horizontal, vertical, or spray pattern, I'm really able to get into all those tight-knit crevices that would take me five times longer to do if I was just doing a paintbrush. If you want to check out their amazing lineup of heat guns, rollers, surface prep tools, and of course, multiple sprayers, then check out the link in the description box below. I applied two coats of stain, let it dry overnight, and proceeded to start working on our roof. The majority of the roof line does have a roofing felt, but I did apply a hardcore membrane on the corners since those areas are obviously more prone to moisture. We are installing a metal roof system, and the first portion that needs to be installed is the lower front lip, which is also called out as a drip edge. I nail it down securely on the edge, and once it's fully nailed down, we can proceed to the actual paneling itself. The paneling comes in a grooved 8 foot long sheet that's galvanized and extremely easy to cut with a metal cutting blade that's attached to my grinder. Each panel is cut 4 feet long, which means that we have zero waste to account for, which is exactly what we wanted in the first place. I position it accordingly and use the specified screws that come with this system which actually have a rubber gasket at the very bottom, therefore we know for certain that no moisture is going to get underneath the fastener. I then secure flashing on both sides of the roof line and then at the very end I install flashing at the very top. I cut, bend, and fit the corners together and then fasten them as needed. 
Once the chicken coop is taken care of, I can then move on to our chicken run, and this is the exact same process, just a longer span. Just keep in mind that you do want each one of these panels overlapped, and if you can, overlap them a couple times. Now that we have our roof taken care of, we can move on to our chicken wire. The material that we're using on this project is called out as 20 gauge poultry netting that has a one inch mesh. And as you can see, I had a very interested BYOT apprentice on hand, which was amazing, extremely cute, and I can't wait to have those moments with my own daughter one day. This material is very strong as a whole, but extremely easy to cut with a few snips. And that's actually really nice because all I need to do is have a couple snips on hand, as well as a staple gun, which makes quick work of getting all of this mesh positioned and secured as needed. The installation of this mesh went very quickly, and the only thing I would like to note is make sure you have long sleeve when you're doing this. I was surprised by how many scrapes I had in my arms while doing this, and I would just advise accordingly on your project. As for the final items on this project, it's all about the small finishing touches. I put some hinges on the nesting roof box, of course a very functional handle, and a lock for our chicken coop. The one key element that I want to note, especially once you put this lock on, is to make sure you drill a hole right here and put some type of slide so if you do find yourself inside of this chicken coop, there's a way to get out. Yeah, I did this to myself. I must have been in the sun a little too long because when I installed the window, I then quickly realized, oh yeah, the door closed behind me. Hey guys, can you come here real quick? Lock myself in. Luckily, someone was home to get me out of this situation mere instantaneously, but don't get yourself into it if you can avoid it. I was in the chicken coop installing the glass, and this is a single glass panel that I picked up at a Home Depot, and all I have to do is secure a couple pieces of trim on the back side, and you're good to go. I move on to our chicken run, or run chicken, and get that installed, which just takes a few screws and a quick test to make sure it actually works, and as long as it works, we can move on to the next step, or in this case, the next ramp. Yeah, this is a small little ramp that I built out of a 2x12 that I just had lying around in my garage, and you can use numerous things for this, but this was extremely sturdy and durable. Out of a few 2x4s, I installed some staggered nesting perches, which is important for a chicken coop to have. And once we cut and install a few pullout trays, guess what? We are done! do love how this chicken coop turned out. It's beautiful, it's extremely structurally sound, and it's really gratifying that we're able to build this from scratch. Unfortunately, the client does not have their chickens yet, so I couldn't test it out myself, but I think they're going to be right at home. Remember, if you do want to see plans for this chicken coop, I will have them linked in the description box of this video. Plus, if you want to see different size chicken coops, let me know, because if more people want to see a specific size, I will make sure and produce some quality plans for that size as well. But with that said, I must say, this is truly one beautiful, sexy beast of a chicken coop. Oh yeah, 